Okay, so there's been some expressed interest in what I took when I go when I went camping at um, the last trip that we went on up at those lakes, high mountain lakes. Uh, but I guess more specifically, kind of what I take in general uh, when going on a camping trip. So I just have the basic stuff out, but this is going to be very representative of kind of the stuff that I'll bring regularly as well. Um, there were other stuff, uh, clothes, I'm not including that. There's obviously going to be base layers, um, some insulation layers, and uh, waterproof Gore-Tex layers to keep us dry when it was raining and hailing on us. I don't have that stuff here, that's kind of just a given. So this is just kind of the gear and kit that I took. And there's also some more stuff because I was there with my wife and some other friends as well. So we kind of divvied up the load so we were able to bring a little bit more. So starting off, I generally carry the um, Osprey Atmos backpack, 65 liter. Uh, we recently got this little clip-on button compass with a thermometer. That's more what I got it for was the thermometer so we can kind of see what's going on and what the temperature is like when we're out there. Um, really good backpack. It rides very comfortably. It's got that anti-gravity system and what I like most about it, probably more than anything else, is it's one of the only backpacks I've ever worn that I don't overheat and sweat on, uh, especially in the back because there's all this ventilation. So there's the backpack. That's your foundation, right? Everything's going to go in there. Uh, for water and drinking purposes, I used a source water bladder. Um, this thing I absolutely love. I think it's a three liter that I got. Um, it's very simplistic. I love it for that reason. The hose comes off super easy. It's super easy to clean. You can fill it from the top or through here. And the cap is not hokey. Uh, I used to own a camelback, and the the mouth faucet area was just really hokey. It had turn on and turn off valves. It had a complicated cap system. This doesn't have any of that. It just has a simple cap that goes over what you drink from, and then you don't have to bite anything to drink from it. You just open it up, and then it, it's basically like a straw. So there's no biting. Nothing. You just open it, drink what you want, close it back up, put your cap over to keep all the debris and dirt and grime out of there, and you are good to go. Love the source water bladder. Um, however, caveat off that, I probably will not be using this in the winter time. Um, it wasn't very hot when we went. Um, I'll probably use this more in the warmer months because when you get into winter time, even though this does have a little bit of a insulative hose, or a covering for the hose, your water will still freeze in a bladder, and you have to keep that in mind. So your hose freezes, your mouthpiece freezes, and then you don't have water to drink from, and your whole thing is kaput, you're just carrying a brick around for the rest of the time. So during the winter, I'll probably stick with just water bottles or um, Nalgene bottles, something like that. So sleeping arrangements. Uh, I went with the three season REI quarter dome. Um, I did another video uh, talking in detail about this tent specifically, so I'll add a link to that. Um, but you can check that out. Very good, good ventilation. Maybe not the best quality materials, but it does the job, and I was very happy with it. Um, my air mattress or sleeping pad, it was a Nemo brand. I got this thing at an REI garage sale. Um, nothing super fancy, it was comfortable enough, um, and it didn't take up a whole lot of space in the pack either, which is very good. Uh, my sleeping bag, this was a Marmot Hydrogen, so it fits in here, it actually compresses down a lot smaller than this. Uh, I didn't bother to do that, though, because I figured this was small enough. Super light, 30 degree bag, um, uh, made of down. And Marmot does this really cool thing where it puts in kind of like a little exterior membrane so it's kind of resistant to water and condensation and snow and all that kind of jazz too. So uh, really nice sleeping bags. I love Marmot. Their down bags rock. Um, and then inside that I used a micro suede liner. Some type of, I don't, I don't, I'm, don't quote me on the material, 
Um, it's, it's a liner for the bag though, and the thought process behind this is I put this inside the bag, it gives me a few extra degrees of warmth, um, but it's more for the cleaning purposes. So um, sleeping bags are kind of a pain to wash sometimes. So instead of washing the sleeping bag, I'll just sleep inside this, inside the bag, and then I can pull this little liner out and throw that in the washing machine, no issues. So that's the thought process behind using this. Um, and then I just had a little inflatable pillow. Um, one of these Eros pillows, Sea to Summit. Really cool, packs down really tiny, hardly any weight at all. Worth its m weight in gold, in my opinion, because I have a hard time sleeping flat. I need some type of pillow for my head. Okay, um, moving on to water type stuff. So most of my water that I drank from came from the bladder, as I already mentioned. But once we got to camp, I wanted to have containers of some site or some type of containers to hold on to water. We also needed some type of way to filter our water. So we have the Katadyne um, Hiker Pro water filter. Um, kind of bulky, not really heavy, um, takes up some space, uh, but I really love it because one, it screws on to any type of wide mouth Nalgene style opening of a bottle. So I have this Nalgene canteen that holds, you know, 96 ounces roughly of water. It also opens up, it packs down flat um, when it's empty, but as you fill it up, it opens up so it has a solid base. So you can just sit it on the ground, then the filter will screw onto the opening of the top, and then you just pump your water through. Um, and it goes really, really quickly. I love that about this filter because it filters the water through both in the opening of the handle as well as the closing of the handle. So I can fill this entire container up in, I don't know, just a couple minutes. It's super awesome. Um, additionally, we had this MSR Drome Light 4 liter uh, water bladder. So this thing holds more water than this one. Downside, it doesn't have a base that opens up like this one does. So you're not able to just sit it down on the ground like I am able to do with this, which I really like about this. This holds more water though. It also has a little opening here to drink it, kind of like a water bottle. Um, and what we used it for primarily was we filled it up with our, um, with our water filter and then we would just hang it from a tree branch or somewhere. We hung it and then we were able to just open that little valve and water would come out. You can use that for washing your hands or anything you can think of. Really cool container. Again, hardly any weight. Carries four liters of water and it's totally flat. So it's really easy to pack um, pretty much anywhere. Let's jump to cooking. Okay, so I got everything for my cooking in this one container. Minus, I don't think I have my titanium spork in there right now. So titanium spork aside, um, this is a so this is a Snow Peak titanium uh, cook set, which is just a large pot. Um, I have a little classical cup in here as well for hot tea or coffee or whatever in the morning. Nice. So it has a little frying pan that doubles as a lid and a large pot. Um, inside that, I contain or I carry the fuel canister for my stove. And I have the Snow Peak uh, super tiny <laughs> stove. I don't remember what it's called. I forgive me. I, I will annotate it in the video. Got a lighter in the bag with the stove itself. Here's the actual stove itself. So super tiny. It's also titanium, which makes it extremely lightweight. Uh, you just fold out these little teeth. Screw that onto your bat, your fuel container, fuel canister. Uh, put your pot on there, and you're good to go. Um, I think that this one doesn't boil a cup of water quite as fast as an MSR Pocket Rocket, um, but it's super lightweight, super tiny, and you know it's still a really good stove. It, it definitely does its job. So there's. That. And that's that's basically it for my cooking setup. Just get this out of the way for now. For lighting, I had my headlamp is basically just a Phoenix headband, and in that I have a mini Cork One Two Three flashlight. 
super, super tiny flashlight just takes a, um, a single CR123 battery to power it and it has multiple modes. Pretty awesome flashlight, waterproof, um, pretty bright, very bright for what you're getting and the weight of it. It has a low, medium, high, and moonlight setting. So, I mean, generally, I'll, I'll keep it on either low or moonlight because your eyes actually pick up a lot more light um, and you don't need that much light, even when it's dark out there. So, moonlight or low, and the battery life is quite good on this light as well. Um, uh, just a couple knickknacks that we had. Um, this was this is a five liter kitchen sink, Sea to Summit brand. Folds up into this little container. Um, when you open it up, you basically have yourself a bucket, is what it is. Um, able to put five liters in here, as I said, and we actually used this thing for uh, washing clothes. Believe it or not. Um, we brought some some little soaps, or our friends had soap, I don't remember exactly. But we just put some soap, filled it up with water, and hand washed our clothes so that we weren't filthy for the entire time we were out there. We also had this tiny little um, REI microfiber cloth. Um, again, super tiny, no weight at all. And we just use little things like this to, you know, keep our keep our sleeping area clean. You know, no one wants to sleep in a pigsty, so keeping things nice and tidy is all good. Uh, I had this little container bag, whatever you want to call it, for toiletry type stuff. So I had toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, mouthwash, uh, some toothpicks, floss, stuff like that. I kept in this little bag here. And then getting on to fire making. Okay, so this is my fire kit. Um, I guess I'll just open it up and kind of talk through what I keep in here. Uh, just a normal big lighter, uh, waterproof container containing uh, weatherproof matches. I got a fire steel and striker. Let's see, regular matches, a couple packs, some tender, uh, Vaseline or petroleum covered cotton balls. And then in this little Altoids tin, I made myself some char cloth. So uh, many different layers of fire making capability uh, because one is none, two is one, you know how the saying goes. Um, for wood processing, the knife that came along with us for that trip was the Cold Steel Leatherneck, which is Cold Steel's take on the Green K bar. Nice knife, does the job. Not a large blade, uh, but the trip really didn't call for a large blade this time. And then for cross cuts, I brought, and I did not bring the case because I didn't need that extra weight, um, but this is the Silky Gomboy folding saw. Oh. So I rely on a saw for cross cuts and I use a knife generally for splitting my wood down into kindling and uh, smaller pieces. Okay, and then just some comfort items that we brought just for the fun of it. You know, not necessary. I'd say that I'd say that most of this stuff that I've gone over so far pretty much necessary to bring when you're going camping out in the wilderness. Maybe not a whole big giant, you know, container for for toiletries or um, the cloth isn't completely necessary, neither is the kitchen sink, but most of this stuff you're going to need to have. You need your water, you need your food. Food, I didn't talk about food. Um, we relied primarily on uh, freeze-dried meals out there as, as well as some basic stuff like ramen noodles that we brought up just for good flavor. But uh, something that I also wanted to talk about um, is this little collapsible hiker uh, fishing rod. Now, I didn't bring this. In fact, I didn't even own this at the time. We got one since. Our friends brought some hiking um, fishing poles such as this, though. 
And that is how we managed to catch ourselves a lot of trout out of those lakes up there. So we were eating good on that trip. We had, I think we caught like eight trout and that was two for each of us. So super, super awesome. That tasted delicious. And tangent over, just some convenient and comfort items. We brought an Eno double nest hammock, double nest hammock, um, along with its, you know, accompanying straps to string it up between two trees. Um, really comfortable, although when it gets pretty cold out, uh, that wind going underneath the, the hammock, you can really feel it, it'll get you cold. So uh, having some type of mat to put in there in the hammock to insulate yourselves from that air is definitely advisable, especially if you're relying on a hammock for going camping or for your sleeping arrangement. So we brought the hammock and, of course, the REI Flex Light Chair. And that pretty much wraps it up. Um, dog, dogness over here, Zeus the Mountain Dog, uh, he carries all his own stuff nowadays. So we were able to get, again, for a really good deal at some REI event, we got this Roughwear backpack for him that he carries. Um, it does the job. It's I think it's just like any dog pack, you really got to make sure that the, the two sides are really evenly um, weight distributed evenly on both sides, otherwise it'll really start to sag on one side like this on his back. Um, and we had to deal with that a couple times, especially as we take water breaks and whatnot, um, because his pack will start to shift its weight um, as he uses water or drinks water. But he'll carry his own water, his own food. Um, he carried his own water bowl, which is this little roughware guy. Uh, definitely works really well. Holds uh, quite a decent amount of water for him to drink. Um, yeah, so he carries all his own stuff. Sometimes we'll even splurge and have him carry some of our stuff. So uh, that's generally it. The mat on the bottom, the um, Thermorest Z Light that I carry for Zeus. So this is his his pad to sleep on and. Both my wife, myself, and Zeus fit relatively comfortably in the REI quarter dome three person tent. And that's pretty much it. Um, if there's anything else, uh, anything specific, any more details that you guys would like, go ahead and shoot me those questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot for watching and have good adventures out there. And if you really want Zeus to mess up your video and walk all over your stuff, just get the stuff out, because he'll be excited and expect that we're going somewhere. Uh, sorry dog, not this time. Then we have... I don't even know what half this stuff is called anymore! This is ridiculous! What is this again? What What brand is this stuff? Oh, God! Oh. What, you think we're going somewhere too? Coco! You don't go camping with us. Ever since our winter excursion, you almost froze to death. You just don't come anymore.